Behind every Greek god, there is a Greek goddess. Or seven, if you're counting all of Zeus's wives. But Hera stands out among the crowd as the queen of the gods. And despite her husband's reputation for getting around, she holds a crown as the supreme goddess of marriage, women, the sky and the stars. And she's usually the one depicted by Zeus's side. As the wife and sister of Zeus, she is a powerful queen whose strong feelings and opinions are often opposed to her husband's. Proud, jealous, and quick to take action when she feels spurned, she can be a danger to gods and mortals who get in her way. But Hera also has a softer side. She is fiercely protected of the institution of marriage, and is also the one who watched over women in childbirth. In some places, she was even identified with the goddess of childbirth, Ilethia. Born to Cronus and Rhea, Hera gained the reputation as the only really married goddess among the Olympians, and she had three children with Zeus. Ares, the god of war, Heba, the goddess of youth, and Hephaestus, the god of fire and metallurgy. From different Greek myths, we find out that Hera's husband was unfaithful, but she stayed by his side. She got angry and often got back at him, but she did not leave. If we were to apply some common modern ideas, we could suspect her of not wanting to abandon the good things, like being an almighty queen and so on. Or maybe we would say that as an abused wife, she was terrified and unable to flee. But the Greek myths are not modern, so we can exclude these options, mostly because gods were not humans, by definition. They acted differently and sometimes enigmatically. Second, in actual Greek social terms, it was pretty much unimaginable that a wife would divorce or leave her husband's house. She and her children would have no status or protection otherwise. But third, maybe the main reason, as goddess of marriage, Hera plays a symbolic role. Her very essence is to embody a bond that endures socially, no matter how it is strained by people's behaviour. As with most myths, there are alternative versions. One of the more common stories features Zeus and his wife. Hearing that a child of one of his many love interests would one day overthrow him, Zeus proceeded to swallow the minor goddess Metis. But as she was already pregnant, the child still had to come out. And it did so, out of Zeus's head. That child was the goddess Athena. This whole sequence of events did nothing but enrage Hera, who sought vengeance by bearing her own child, named Hephaestus, without any help from a male. But Hephaestus was born with a birth defect. When she saw the baby was lame, she rejected him and threw him off Mount Olympus. Hephaestus managed to survive the long fall and landed on an island in the Aegean Sea, where he was cared for and eventually managed to become a master metal worker. To get back at his mother, he made a golden throne and sent it to her as a gift. But the chair had hidden bonds that sprang into action when Hera sat down, so she was held fast, unable to move. All the gods begged Hephaestus to let her go, but he refused until the god of wine, Dionysus, got him drunk and brought him to Olympus to undo the trick chair. But there is another version of the Hephaestus myth. The other story is that when it was in fact Zeus who threw Hephaestus off the mountain, and that due to this fall, he got injured and became lame in the first place. The plot in this alternative version was that Zeus had suspended Hera in chains, dangling her from Mount Olympus. He did this because she was harassing his son, Hercules, born from a mortal woman. When Hera's son, Hephaestus, came to her rescue, Zeus was incensed and ejected him from the mountain. So practically, these two versions are very different. In the first one, Hera is pure evil, and in the second, she is a loving mother. Another story of Hera and Zeus is also related to their love life. She remained faithful to Zeus, and Zeus often betrayed her by sleeping with others. So, when Zeus was harsh on the other gods, Hera talked them into a revolt against Zeus. Hera drugged Zeus, and the other gods bound him on his bed and stole his thunderbolt. However, Briareus, who had been freed by Zeus from the prison Tartarus, overheard their conversation and realised that Zeus was tied he sneaked in and untied the king of the gods. Zeus woke up and was furious. He hung Hera from the heavens with golden shackles. Hera cried all night, but no one dared to help her. The next day, Zeus showed her mercy and released her, but only after he made her swear that she would never again plot and rebel against him. So again, she was sneaky, some kind, some evil. But again, she had her reasons. In another interesting story regarding Hera, Zeus is related to a mortal, Samil, a priestess of Zeus. 
Once, while flying in the form of an eagle, Zeus fell in love with her. They became lovers, and soon Samil became pregnant with his child. As Samil started boasting that Zeus was her lover, Hera discovered his affair. She disguised herself as a human nurse and befriended Samil. When Samil confided in her that her lover was actually Zeus, she pretended not to believe and asked her to demand Zeus to reveal himself in all his glory. When Zeus visited Samil the next time, she asked him for a boom, which he granted out of love. She then begged him to show her his true godly form. Unable to break a promise, Zeus revealed himself to Samil. She could not handle the glorious sight and was consequently burned to death. Zeus was however able to save her child by sewing the fetal into his thigh. This led to the birth of Dionysus a few months later. The next story has the main character of a cow. When her husband Zeus had just married Io, Hera tried to catch him with her. Watching her arrive and afraid of her wrath, Zeus turned Io into a snow-white cow. However, Hera was not fooled and demanded Zeus to give her the cow as a present. Zeus could not refuse, and as a result, Hera came into possession of the transformed Io. She tied the cow to a tree and sent her servant Argus to watch Io and keep her away from Zeus. Argus had a hundred eyes all over his body, and he only closed half of them at a time. This made it impossible for Io to escape his watch. Zeus asked Hermes to kill Argus and rescue Io, which he did by lulling all 100 eyes into an eternal sleep. Eventually, Io made it to Egypt, where she was named Isis and was worshipped. Hera eventually permitted Zeus to turn Io back into her human form, but only on the condition that he would never look at her again. The next story is about Hercules, the most famous character in Greek mythology. He was Hera's stepchild, born from a mortal woman after another affair with Zeus. He was her nemesis in many ways because of that. While Hercules was an infant, Hera sent two snakes to kill him while he was lying in his cot. Hercules, however, was born with extraordinary strength and throttled the snakes with his bare hands. When Hercules became an adult, it was Hera who drove him to insanity, which caused him to murder his entire family and then undertake the famous labours of Hercules. Once again, Hera tried to make his twelve labours as difficult as possible. After Hercules' death, all that remained was his immortal spirit, and he finally became a full god, joining his father Zeus on Mount Olympus, where he married his fourth and final wife, Hebe. It was only after Hercules died and came to live atop Mount Olympus that Hera finally reconciled with him. Hera's wrath was infamous, and it sometimes didn't spare even those she was ordinarily fond of. The story of Tiresias is one such example. Tiresias was the son of the shepherd Everis and the nymph Chiriclo. While he was a young man, he saw two snakes mating and decided to hit them with a stick. Hera cursed him as a result and transformed him into a woman. As a woman, Tiresias became a priestess of Hera. After seven years as a woman, he found a pair of snakes mating again. This time he left them alone and became a man again. Since Tiresias had experienced life as both a man and a woman, Zeus and Hera asked him to decide which gender experienced more pleasure during sexual intercourse. Zeus claimed it was women, while Hera said that it was men. When Tiresias said it was women, Hera got so angry that she struck him blind. Zeus couldn't undo the curse, but he decided to give him the gift of prophecy instead. So. Was Hera evil, or was she just jealous? In my humble opinion, I feel pity for her and the fact that she was cheated through her entire marriage with Zeus. And of course, this could make her mad, but she has no excuse for hurting and killing innocent people. What are your thoughts about Hera? Do you consider her entitled for her actions, or was she pure evil? Leave your answer in the comments below. Yours truly, Mythos, the Historian.